Table 26 is Eleanor Colada, Patricia Tipton. And table 26. Get up, stand down. Yes, what is your name? Alexis. Oh, okay. Can I get a picture? Awesome. Hello everybody, so I'm going down to meet uh, Little Mike at the Cube Club uh, for session six. Uh, the weather here is a little gloomy here in Vegas, and uh, yeah, it's been raining for a couple days, and but Vegas needed it, it, hadn't rained, it hasn't rained in a while. So yeah, let's go. All the people that are, that are that are that are really watching this and, and pay attention, I just want you know, no matter what it is, and I've said it before, I just my whole wish and my whole plan for this is to get more people to play better pool, and whatever works for you works for you, and I just want to thank everybody for watching all our videos and asking the questions because the only dumb questions are the ones that aren't asked, and um, thank you very much. Hi everybody, what's up? So today we're going to talk about uh, pivoting. There's been a lot of emails and comments asking about pivoting, and uh, we're going to answer it today. We're going to show. We're going to show, We're going to get more detailed into how Mike pivots. All right. So let's go. So when I line up on this ball, just like just like I said before, I line up the center of the ball, and then I pivot over to three quarter. But I can't. I have to start the center. And then the amount to pivot is as such minute that it's not going to change my point of aim. So here I line up center of the ball and then I go over. See there's no hardly any change whatsoever. Done. I'll do it again. I'll do it this way. And I'll pivot to the left. So here I am. I line up straight to the ball. Okay. I go over to three quarters and dead in the hole. And Every he does use the backhand pivot, is that correct? This is backhand. It's so small. It's so small because of the distance. Um, because of the distance away from the ball, it's just so small. It's such a, a, a minute, it's such a minute thing. So if I'm, if I'm aiming here, then to aim here is nothing, you see? So I'm to start here and then go to here, which is three quarters. So I start there, go to three quarters. Yeah, you can't even see the pivot. Yeah. Now it's so small. It's uh, it's uh, this is on on the almost. Remember, I told you almost straight is splitting the difference. So all I got to do is line up to the center, split the difference, dead in the hole. No English, no nothing. My ball comes off straight. Everything comes in line. If I was shooting it with English, I could shoot it the same way. You'll see the the direction. My ball will take, I'll shoot it with no English once again, okay, then it's straight, give it three quarters, dead in the hole, no English, my ball comes straight off the rail. Well now I can shoot the same ball with left hand English and you'll see the difference. So now I line up straight, I split the difference, shoot with left hand English, there's the difference right there, dead in the hole still. So, as you can see, I'm not using any English at all when I'm shooting this ball and I'm splitting the difference. I'm just shooting the ball, finding the center, finding three quarters to the left, and going through. Dead in the hole. Center the ball, go over three quarters, dead in the hole. It's that easy. So, okay, so here I wanna, I wanna shoot the same shot. I'm gonna end up going through with right hand English. But I'm going to line up the center, split the difference, quarter, and go through with right. Dead in the hole. Perfect shape. And I can do the same thing from here. I can do the same thing and come all the way around the table. So let's just say the next ball is the nine ball and it's down here. Okay. So of course I can either draw the ball all the way back or I can just go three rails with my cue ball. It's the same way. So. I line up in the center, I go to three quarter, and I go right hand English and dead in the hole. 
Can I get some money? Yep. Nice. All right. So I think uh, some people in the comments asked about about showing his follow through in slow motion. So here, here it is. Yeah. So this is this is uh, splitting the difference from Mike without any English. Without well, any swiping. English. So then go to three quarters and then. No, no fault. No, no. There's no rotation on the cue ball. It's all straight. So I'm going through to the center. Okay, now we're going to do one with the swiping. Okay, and you'll see with the swiping, I'm going to get so much right hand English on the ball. The ball is going to probably hit right here before the side pocket and come this way. Line up in the center. Go to three quarters. It's just center ball. No line English. Up, line up to the 15, go over to three quarters, and. Dead and old. Now Mike's gonna swipe the ball. Now I'm gonna swipe the ball, left hand English. Get some chalk on my team here. Here we go. Line up in the center. Pivot to the three quarters. That's just left, no bottom? Yeah, that's left bottom. Oh, okay. Line up to the center. Go over to three quarters. And. Beautiful. Dead in the hole. All the way around the table. Perfect. If you don't follow through, you're gonna poke at the ball and you're gonna you're gonna put unnecessary English on the ball. So yeah, follow through, you have to actually hit through the cue ball. So if you're if you're not looking at the cue ball, you're gonna hit through it. But if you look at the cue ball, you're gonna stop. Your your mind, we're all human, is gonna make us stop at the point we're looking at. Just like I said to you before. If I tell you to punch the table, you know you're going to break your hand or break your break your hurt yourself. So you're going to stop because you see the table there. Well, if I blindfolded you and told you to punch down, you're probably going to break your hand because you're not going to know when to stop. So it's the same thing as looking at the object ball last. So no matter what, we have to look at it last. And that way, if we're looking at the ball last, we're going to go through the cue ball like the cue ball's not even there. And that's where the follow through comes in. So um, let me get to here chalk. So here, I'll follow the ball all the way to the end. Make a little angle here. Line up straight. Split the difference. All the way. And it sticks all the way out here. It doesn't stop here. It's all the way out here. No matter what. Whether I hit follow or draw, however I hit it, I have to go through the cue ball. Otherwise, I'm not going to get the exact rotation or the exact what I'm looking for from the cue ball. So, so if I want to draw the ball, I do the same thing. I line up. And let's just say here, let's just say my ball's here. I line up and my whole object is to draw the ball. Let's say I want it to either come off the rail or draw it all the way back here. So I line up straight. I split the difference and through. Dead in the hole. In perfect shape every time. I think my opinion is it is when I swiping is going through the cue ball. So once you learn once you learn and you see the angle, then you can just like driving a car. It's um, if we want to make a right hand turn, we look at the road. So let's say I wanna I wanna I wanna swipe the ball and I wanna I wanna put right hand English on the ball. Well I call it swiping. So and I wanna get shape on the one. So I know 
that if I line up in center, pivot over to three quarter, and then swipe to the right, I'm going to come perfect shape on a one ball. Okay. Um, if I want to, if I want to go to the left, I can go to the left and come all the way around. It doesn't make a difference, but you're going to get more English out of the ball when you swipe through the ball because you're going through the cue ball. So that's just my opinion, and my opinion only. I'm not downing anybody else's stuff, but when for me it works, I love it. Okay, and I I don't like to do it any other way. I don't like to line up on the cue ball over here, over here. I like to line up the way I like to line up and go through the cue ball. So I line up center, three quarter, and right. Dead in the middle. Every time. Go to three quarters, swipe through to the right. Dead in the hole. You want me to shoot this ball again? If you want to. I will. I'm not going to miss it. Okay. okay. So we line up with center, go over to three quarters, swipe through to the right. Look at that. That's beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. That's gorgeous. Dead in the hole. Dead in the hole. All of them are dead and old. We don't miss, right, Kenny? Never. Never. So, same thing. Even I don't need to swipe in order to get around the hole on this one because, say, we want to get shape on this next ball. All we need to do is go through a center ball because it's just going to come straight around. So, remember, this is splitting the difference. Horizon? Yes, horizon. Okay. This is splitting the difference is like this. Horizon's like this, okay? So now we're at the horizon. We're just aiming right here. Okay. Dead in the hole, right? We already know it is. Okay. Dead in the hole. What's with the F and Reyes strokes? You want to see the F and Reyes stroke? No, you're showing it us to us already. <laughs> okay, so there's questions at where when you pivot the pivoting part mm -hmm. when you pivot on this ball on the cue ball does it does your stick move anywhere that's not hitting the center no why would it not even a so little bit i'm aiming i'm aiming to the center i pivot to three quarters i'm still in the center right yeah i'm aiming to the center of this ball pivot to three quarters i'm still in the center head in the hole there you have it folks that I'm sure that answers a lot of your questions. It might bring up even more questions, but uh, there it is. That's pivoting. That's why that drill that Mike taught me in the beginning was showing us about this dot, this circle is very, very important because you can put it here and aim at a ball, and when you stroke through, you can see how far you're hitting off the ball. Exactly. And you know the other thing that I do, I want to try. I want to. You know what? That's a good, that's a good point you brought up. You'll see me a lot of times in my matches. If you see any of my matches, which you, which you have, you'll see me line up, and I am lining up ahead of this ball. I am lining up ahead of this ball and getting, getting my, hand, my, my hand down. So I line up ahead of this ball, so no matter what, I'm going to go through. There's not going to be no poke out of my stick. So I line up ahead of it, come back, and split the difference, and dead no Because I'm allowing myself, I'm, not, I'm allowing myself to go through the ball. But if you just line up to the ball like this, you could be, you could be starting in your ending position and, and you're not going to get follow through on the ball. But if you line up ahead of the ball and bring your hand back, you're going to go through the ball no matter what. And that gives you the opportunity, a chance to win. And I have noticed while I was playing, if I'm confident, if I'm shooting one, I'm confident, I'm following through all the time. But when I'm, when I'm indecisive and a little bit have a lot of questions, I tend to poke at the ball more. 
Right, and you probably tend to poke at the ball because of that reason. You don't take the time to figure out that, okay, well, something's going on here, and you're, or you're thinking of other things, so instead of lining up ahead of this ball and coming down, you're just lining up like this, and it could be you're lining up too far back. So that, that cuts that for me. So a lot of times I'll get down like this, and, and, and I'll already be, no matter what, I'm going to go through the ball. So I know if there's that tough shot or whatever, um, no matter what, I know that if I need to really stroke it and I have to go through the ball, I'm going to line up even farther from the cue ball and bring my hand back so that ball even comes back farther. So I'm just going to go straight through it and there's not going to be uh, no misconception on poking the ball or any, any unnecessary English put on the ball because that's what happens. And if you aren't exactly in the center of the ball, when you poke the ball, you're going to almost masse the cue ball into that ball and it's going to force unnecessary spin and the ball is going to go probably in a different direction. For your Besides, Mike, besides jumping the ball, I know you, of course you got to poke at the ball when you're jumping uh, the ball. No, you don't. No, you don't? Yeah. You, so you hit right through it. Hit right through it. Is there any time, like kill shots or anything like that, that you, you would need to poke at the ball? Uh, well, I would, if, the ball's too, if the object ball is too close to the cue ball, you would have to. Yeah, if the object ball is, well, it's something like that, of course. And, and, or if you're shooting over a ball, right. uh, then you know, it's hard to follow through when, when you're on top of a ball when you're on top of a ball like this. I mean, sure, you can try and follow through, but it's really hard to follow through because the amount of follow through is going to be so minute that uh, it's going to almost, you, you have no choice but to poke the ball. Um, yeah, I can show you a couple shots where I poke the ball and use it to my advantage. Yeah, let's do it. Um, so, let's say that I have too much, too much angle Let's say I have too much angle over here, and the eight ball, the eight ball's over here. So I have to almost, and I can't go two rails out. The balls are blocking it. I have to come straight up and come over here with inside English. Well, that's almost a, a, a poke follow through because if you really have to get somewhere, and you know you can't really follow through because the harder you hit it, the ball's going to go to the left and you have to go through to the left. So you have to almost poke this ball in order to get more spin on the ball because it's going to almost mass A and it's going to come off. Um, it's kind of like, here I got a better analogy for you. Okay. You got the eight ball right here and you have, you're shooting a three ball, which is right here. And the cue ball, is straight with the three ball almost. So you know it's kind of like, you know you're probably not going to get on the eight because you're going to like run into the eight. And you have no choice but to shoot the eight in this hole, let's just say, because let's just say, let's even make it better. Let's just say there are balls over here. Okay. There are balls here, so you can't get to that side to shoot the eight over here. So, and you're way out here, okay? So the only thing you can do you shoot it with a lot of left hand English, but if you poke it, it's gonna, the cue ball is gonna spin so much when it hits this rail, it's gonna take off and come down here. Right, and when you poke it, instead of following through the cue ball, does it, the, what you were saying, the energy back in the days, it, it won't travel and won't have more of a. Exactly. It, yeah. I'm gonna line up and, and I'm gonna split the difference. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna go through to the left on draw. Nice. And you see how much difference, see how much the ball rolls over? Let's, let's show them what happens when you follow through with this. Okay, when you follow through on this ball, I'm going to run, in, run into those balls. I'm not supposed to hit the eight ball at all. I'm supposed to be on this side of the eight ball. I'm supposed to be on this side of the eight ball. So. We'll do it like this, okay? We'll make it even better. So no matter what, I have to be right down here in order to win the game. And I'm all the way out here. So my speed has to be perfect. I have to not hit any of those balls and I have to get on the end rail, so that's what I'm gonna do. 
dead in a hole, dead perfect. <laughs> wow. Couldn't do any Good better touch. than you. Okay. And that was a poke at the that ball. That was a poke, okay. Okay. Now if I follow through the ball, okay, guaranteed I'm gonna hit those balls and it's gonna get in front of the eight ball and I'm gonna probably lose the game. So do it again. And I'm gonna follow through the ball here, okay. What I tell you. I lose. So if you want to beat an angle, it's the only time where you really have to break out the arsenal. You know, and you have to do it, you, you, you just do it. And the same thing as driving a car, you should be able to do it every time, just line up, do what you're supposed to do, and you know, see where you want the ball, to a car to go. And there's no difference than anything else. There you go. It's just speed control okay. right there. Hi, everybody. Uh, so I just found, while I was at the pool hall, I just found out from my doctor that I have to go through a medical surgery procedure. Yeah. And um, I, very, very disappointing because me and Mike were looking for this, uh, looking to go on this trip to Derby City. And um, I just can't do it, man. I feel bad. I feel really, really bad. And, you know, Mike, Mike wanted to be there. I wanted to be there, but uh, what are health more important? Your health's more important, Kenny. You yeah. know, but we will. We will definitely. When I get healthier, we will definitely be coming around, be t traveling. So, yeah. So, sorry, I was looking forward to meeting y'all. But uh, if you ever come to Vegas, you know we're at Q Club. <laughs> no, we'll, we'll we'll make a trip. We're gonna make a trip out there. So, guys, peace.